In the heart of Duncan Plateau, a saga of opulence, power, and grandeur unfolded over centuries, and at its helm was the Nawab of Hyderabad, popularly known as the Nizam. Tales of their unparalleled wealth are not just legends, but documented facts. With the last Nizam Usama Ali Pasha being dubbed as the richest man in the world by Time magazine in 1937 and is considered the seventh richest person in history. His fortune at his peak was worth about 2% of US economy. The title Nizam derived from the Arabic word Nizam ul Mulk translates to order of the Rome. In the context of the Mughal Empire, the Nizams played a pivotal role in governance primarily overseeing the expansive and diverse Deccan region, and trusted with the task of ensuring stability and effective administration, they held significant sway in their territories. However, as the 18th century witnessed the decline of the Mughal Empire's might, the Nizam sought and gradually established their greater autonomy for themselves. Even as they maintained a normal alliance to the Mughal throne, their dominance in the duck and evolve in a realm of their own, where they exercise considerable power and independence. The princely state of Hyderabad, under the rule spanned across parts of present-day Maharashtra, Karnataka, and Telangana. The Nizams were patrons of art, culture, and architecture. Their reign saw a flourishing of Urdu literature, music, the construction of monument architectural gems like the Jo Mahalla Palace, Falak Numa Palace. Their administrative acumen was evident in the establishment of a railway network, postal system, and major reserves like Osman Sagar. The Nizams were known for their grand celebrations. When the sixth Nizam's eldest son was married, the celebrations were so grand that they are said to have lasted several weeks with invitees coming from all over the India and abroad. Despite the opulence, the Nizams also had a compassionate side. The seventh Nizam was also known to disguise himself and roam the streets of Hyderabad to understand the condition of his subjects better. This helped him implement policies to assist the less fortunate. Known for their strategic diplomacy, the Nizams maintained a fine balance in their relations with the powerful empires notably the British and Marathas. The Nizams formed alliances when necessary and occasionally took a stand against these forces, showcasing both their political flexibility and fortitude. Historians often regard the Nizams as pragmatic rulers who prioritized their well-being and prosperity of their state over the tumultuous politics of the Indian subcontinent. Their capacity to maintain autonomy especially during the British Raj, stands testaments to their diplomatic prowess. However, critiques exist, particularly concerning their conservative approach to certain social reforms. One of the earlier Nizams had a significant number of women in his harem. Gossip from the time suggests that he would throw a rose from his balcony and whomever catch it would be his companion for the night. While the Nizams maintained a formidable army, often using it as a diplomatic tool to negotiate with other powers. Military campaigns were varied. There were instances of conflict, especially with the Marathas, but over time their military strategy leaned more towards alliances and treaties than outright warfare. Urdu, heavily influenced by Persian, was the official language and the lingua franca of the court. However, the diverse populace of the state spoke Telugu, Marathi, Canada. Post-Indian independence, the Nizam of that time, Usman Ali Khan, was ensnared in controversy due to his inspiration to remain independent or possibly join Pakistan, given the significant Muslim population of his state. However, the Indian government initiated a police action named Operation Polo in 1948, resulting in the annexation of Hyderabad into Indian Union. While originally serving the Mughal Empire as its waned, the Nizam's autonomy grew. Their relationship 
with the British was intricate. They were technically a princely state under the British raw, but enjoyed significant independence. The Marathas and Nizams had a history marked by both alliances and conflicts, reflecting the dynamic political landscape of the time. It's also worth noting that intriguing claims that the last Nizam's grandfather, Princess Esra, married the Prince of Berar, Mukarram Jah, who is believed to have ties to Ottoman Sultan lineage, thus waving an intricate tapestry of royal connections across continents. The descendants of the Nizam, while no longer ruling monarchs, had kept their legacy alive. However, they have faced challenges, from property dispute to maintaining their vast estates. The opulence of their ancestry may have dimmed, but their lineage and historical significance remain undeniable. The Nizams of Hyderabad, with their intricate dance of diplomacy, cultural patronage, and immense wealth, carved out an era that remains unparalleled in Indian history. Their legacy, while multifaceted, occasionally controversial, paints a portrait of rulers who stood at the crossroads of tradition and modernity, of indigenous rule and colonial influence. The echoes of their reign, from the bustling streets of Hyderabad, to the silent corridors of their palaces stand testament to an empire that once was grand, opulent, and ever resplendent. Amidst the vibrant historical narratives of India, Junagar, a princely state on the southwest coast of Gujarat, presents an enigmatic chapter. Its Nawab, a Muslim ruler of predominantly Hindu region, navigated the tumultuous waters of pre- and post-independent India, leaving behind a legacy steeped in controversy and intrigue. The history of Junagar's Nawab's trace back to the 18th century. Originally appointed as governors by the Mughal Empire, they began to assert more autonomy as the Mughal influence waned. As the empire disintegrated, they seized the moment and declared themselves as the independent rulers of Junagar consolidating their power and authority. Junagar, with its fertile lands and strategic location alongside the Arabian Sea, was a prize for any ruler. The Nawab oversaw an area dotted with forts and palaces, testaments to their architectural patronage. Girnar, an ancient mountain, and the Gir Forest, home to Asiatic lines, were parts of this scenic territory. The Nawabs were adept administrators, they invested in infrastructure, developing roads, railways, and ports. Junagar, under their reign, witnessed growth in trade and agriculture. The Nawabs were also known for their patronage of arts and culture, promoting local festivals and literature. While historians acknowledge the administrative acumen of the Nawabs, they also delve into their eccentricity. For instance, Nawab Mahabat Kanji's passion for dogs were legendary. He even organized a lavish marriage for his pets, an event that drew international attention. Junagar did not have significant military campaigns in its late history. Their main strength was its maintaining alliances, especially with the British Empire, ensuring the state's autonomy and the security. The court language was Urdu, reflecting the Muslim heritage of the Nawabs. However, given the majority Hindu population, Gujarati was predominant among the masses. The linguistic diversity was a reflection of Junagar's eclectic cultural millennium. As India neared independence, the princely states were given the choice to either join India or Pakistan or remain independent. Nawab Mahabat Khanji III, in a surprising move, opted to accede to Pakistan in 1947. A decision that was contentious given Junagar's geographical isolation from Pakistan and its Hindu majority population. The India government did not recognize the accession. Amidst political pressure and internal unrest, a plebiscite was held, in which the people overwhelmingly voted to join India. Following this, the Nawab fled to Pakistan. While the Nawab's historical ties to the Mughals, by the 18th century, they operated with considerable autonomy. Their most crucial alliance was with the British Empire, under whose shelter they enjoyed protection and autonomy. Their interactions with the Marathas were limited mainly to the local skirmishes and negotiations. 
The Nawab's decision to accede to Pakistan remains a debated topic in Indian history. It is viewed by many as a reflection of the complex religious and political dynamics of the time. The descendants of the Nawab have since lived in Pakistan. Their current condition vary, with some reports suggesting that they live in relative obscurity, distance from their once lavish lifestyle in Junagar. The Nawab of Junagar's story is one of the grandeur, administrative prowess, and controversial choices. In the large narrative of the Indian subcontinent, the stand is a testament to the complexities that the regional rulers faced in the face of the colonialism and the dawn of the new democratic era. The echoes of their decisions, especially during the twilight of their rule, still resonate in the annals of South Asian history. If you like my content, please do subscribe like and put comment and if you do want to see the history of mughal empire please visit our channel thank you